in memory of our beloved king. Six simple words, but they spring from the heart of a people, and they sing a hymn of lament more beautiful, more touching than the great works of lasting genius. A nation mourns, and with deep sincerity, even as it goes about its daily tasks. No pomp, no panoply, for this is the new world. But the king lived here too, deep in the hearts of his people. In cities, towns and hamlets, suddenly hushed and somber, Australians pay their last tribute to a beloved man. All feel a sense of great personal loss, for King George was a friend as well as a ruler. Winston Churchill said of him, never at any moment, in all the perplexities at home and abroad, public or private, did he fail in his duties. Well does he deserve the farewell salute of all his governments and peoples. And so the flags are lowered to half-mast, for a kindly man, a man of courage, a man who served his people even as he walked with death and was not afraid. People throng the churches. He was a man of faith. His family life was an inspiration to all men. And so his subjects, whatever their faith, go to pray. The king is dead, but his memory is immortal. The throne of England, which is indeed the throne of all the Commonwealth nations, is never vacant. The king is dead, long live the queen. And so today, for the first time in more than 100 years, a new queen is hailed. Elizabeth II, in her 26th year, the mother of children, sits upon the mightiest and most enduring throne in the world. In the nation's capital, Canberra, the Speaker of the House, flanked by cabinet ministers and leaders of the opposition, awaits the Queen's representative, the Governor-General, Sir William McCall. Before foreign diplomats, and Australia's elected representatives, the Prime Minister, Mr Menzies, accompanies Sir William to the steps of Parliament House to proclaim the new Queen. And the Governor-General proclaims Queen Elizabeth II. Our tongue and heart publish and proclaim that the high and mighty Princess Elizabeth Alexandra Mary is now, by the death of our late Sovereign of happy memory, become Queen Elizabeth II, by the grace of God, Queen of this realm, and of all her other realms and territories, head of the common... The crown on the head of the young Elizabeth is a symbol not of majesty, but of unity. The unity of people bound together by a tie which has stood in an almost unbroken line for close to 2,000 years. May it ever remain. In our youth lies the destiny of the world of the future. Tens of millions of children throughout the British Commonwealth sorrow at the passing of a well-loved king and rejoice in the accession of a young and beautiful girl who from this day forth shall be their queen. In a school near Sydney, a simple touching ceremony symbolizes their faith and their love. With Elizabeth, they well may live on into the 21st century, we but glimpse along the misty corridors of time. May it be a better, cleaner world. God bless Elizabeth. Long may she reign.